slaves that tell God's house and they are the tongue have been new until then. Jacob vowed up. If God stand by me and protect me on this journey on which I am set, set it out, keep me in food and clothes and bring me back in one piece to my father's house, this God will be my God. The <laughs> Jacob now is taking a little higher. He said, God, no, 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 no. You say you will stick with me. And, and if you will stick with me, you will clothe me, you will sustain me, you will keep me, then I will make you my God. Uh-huh. This stone that I've set up as a memorial pillar will mark this as a place where God lived. And everything you give me, I will return a tent. So here Jacob said, Lord, you bless me, I will give a tent. You see, time is important now. Tent is important. We're going to talk about that, but tithing is important. A tent of your gross. Ooh, your gross. A tent of it. Mm -hmm. So here Jacob says, Jacob says, Lord, I'm in a vow. Now you, 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 you have given me, you have given me this prophetic thing in the dream. You said I will stick with you until I've done everything I promise you. I want you to know tonight God will stick with you. God will keep you until he perform what he says he will perform for you. He will perform. What is, the word, what is the word promise? The word promise, the evil word promise is gabar, which means to speak, command, propose, declare, appoint, to give, or a declaration or assurance that one will do a particular thing or a particular thing will happen. It also means assure someone that one will definitely do, give, or arrange something. It's a short thing. It's a surety when something is promised, it means that it has to be done. And watch now, watch now, this is not a promise that you are making to God. I'm going to write a promise that is made God is making to you. And since God is made a promise, making a promise to you, you can rest assured that he will make sure that promise is fulfilled. Because God has vowed by himself with himself. And since God made a vow to be with you, to sustain you, to supply for you, he cannot and he will not break that promise. And that's what God said to Jacob. Jacob, I will stick with you. Jacob didn't say, God, I will stick with you. God said, Jacob, I will stick with you until I perform. Hello, hello. Until I perform what I and because God has made such a strong declaration, Jacob realized that he had to make sure. Watch now, he don't make a vow. I said, God, okay, you made this vow, and now I will make a vow. As you continue to sustain me, clothe me, feed me, Lord, I will make you my God. Somebody make the Lord your God. Make the Lord your God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Make him your God tonight. So when something is promised, the bar, it means that you have, it's a command. And a command by God cannot be broken. Command with man can broke. It can break. When someone makes a vow with you, they can break. Hello? Your spouse said they will keep the vow, but then afterwards they broke the vow. But God will not. God will not break his vow. God will not destroy his, his, his promises. He will do exactly what he says he will do. Watch what he says in 2 Corinthians uh, uh, 1, 2, and uh, 20 and 21. Watch what he said. For all the, all Promises of God in Him I yea and Amen. And unto the glory of God by us, all the promises in Him, in Him, in Him, God made a promise in Himself. God made a promise to you. God said, I will do this. God said, I will do that. God said, by your stripes, He's here. So He has made a promise that if you have sickness, you're here. And you're not supposed to have sickness because He ordered you to call the cross. He already went down in the grave and He rose again. The promise is of God in him. So God made a promise in himself, not the man, not with his angels, not with nobody, but in himself. So if God promises in him, I yea and amen, it means what God promised you, you are talking to, what God promised you, you will perform it. You will 
Because all of his prophecies in him are yea and amen. Henry says in Joshua, the Lord spoke to Joshua. So Joshua, hear Joshua. I want you to know, watch Joshua, that what I've spoken, what I've said, is going to come to pass. I want somebody to know, you're saying, I've been waiting, Lord, for 20 years. I've been waiting for 15 years. I've been waiting for so long, God. Where you at? It's coming in this time and season. What he promised is coming in this time and season. Henry says in Joshua 21. Verses 43 and 45. And the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which is swear. All the land which is swear. That word swear is Shabbat. Shabbat. Exchange oath or feed to the full. To give unto their fathers and their possess and they possess it. So God promised Israel, I will bring you out of captivity. I will take you in the wilderness, but I will take you to the land. I will take you to the land. And they possess it. And they possess it. The word possess is Yarasha, which means inherit or to or enjoy. You will enjoy the promise, baby. You will not die without the promise. You will not die without the promise. But God promised is going to come to pass. Then he says, he gave them and they possess it. Mm -hmm. And it's Joshua 21 now and 43 and dwell therein. And the Lord gives them rest. You're getting rest. I see you're getting rest in this time. You don't have to labor. You don't have to struggle. And oh, you don't have to struggle any longer. God is giving you rest. That word rest is nuka, which means permitted, give comfort, or seize, or be at peace. God is going to seize every trouble, everything you've been laboring for, everything you've been crying out for. God is going to give you rest. Somebody say, I'm going to rest. And he said, he give them rest round about according to all that he swear unto their fathers. And there stood that a man of all their enemies before them. The Lord delivered. The word delivered is not tied up. He delivered, he gave, he put, he had an appointed or a son. He delivered all their enemies into their hands. And I want you to know what the enemy is trying to do. God will cause you to conquer your enemies.
411-8904. You can write to Apostle Merkley A. Sampson to P.O. Box 301-054, Brooklyn, New York, 11230. Calling your loved ones and your family, your co work and everyone and let them know that Pastor Sam's is on tonight. And I'm talking to you of God will give you what he what he promised. God will give you what he promised. Just flip, let's, let's flip it around. God will give me what he promised. What God promised you, he's going to make sure he do it. And God promised you that Jacob wanted his own. He just wanted his own blessing. He just wanted his own. He just wanted to have his own. Because Jacob, remember, he was the one that fought with his brother. He was the one that uh, was a supplanter. He was the one that he was a grabber. And Jacob wanted his own. And God called Jacob in a place where Jacob had one of the most prophetic dreams that God released unto Jacob what he had promised him. God gave Jacob the promise. And I want you to know tonight God is giving you the promise. God is giving you what he says he will do. One of the things you have to understand, and I was looking at, at Deuteronomy 7 and 9. I want us to look at it in Deuteronomy 7 and 9. God said something that's so great. And one of the things you have to understand, when God made a promise, he's obligated. Watch this. He's obligated to keep that promise. And God was obligated to keep the promise that he made for the children of Israel, that he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He was obligated. Whatever God says he will do in your life, you got to hold on to that and don't give up. You got to believe God and stand on his promises. The more you stand in the promises of God, you will see that God will do what he says. Because God says he's not a man he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. And if God has spoken something about you, for you, and he will do to you, and for you, you can rest assured that he will make sure it comes to pass. We find in Deuteronomy 7 and 9, he says, no, mm -hmm. That word no is yada, which means appointed or acknowledge or acquainted or bring. No, uh huh. No, therefore, that the Lord thy God, He is God. He is God. So you gotta know that you know for yourself. Have an encounter with God for yourself. Have a relationship with God for yourself. So he said, No, know that therefore that the Lord thy God, He is God. Know it for yourself. Have that relationship with God for yourself. Not only know God for yourself, that He is faithful, the faithful God which keepeth covenant. God is faithful. He's faithful. And that word faithful is a man, which means to, to preserve or, or, or it means to conform or to support or believe or put your trust in. Know that God, he is faithful. The faithful God, which keep it. Watch out. Which keep it. The word keep it. Shamar. Like Shamar anointed. Keep it. Shamar. Watch. Preserve. To keep it. Body God, God keep it, he keep it, Shamar, he watch, he body God, or he preserve his covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. So because God has spoken, he has sworn, and he sworn up about the covenant that he says he will keep, he has to keep it. So whatever God says he will do for you, he will not break it. He's not a breaker of covenant. God doesn't break his covenant. He will never break it. He will give you exactly what he says he will do for you. Because he said, the faithful God which keepeth Shema, which preserve, which watch, which body God, what is covenant.
without any doubt and understand that the Lord their God, He is God, the faithful God who keep Him, who keep Him is covenant. So watch this. He kept it for the children of Israel and He still is keeping it. It's continuous. He's still keeping it. So what He promised you, oh, all my life I've been waiting for my blessing. God's going to bless you. Keep on waiting. Keep on trusting because what? He's keeping His covenant. He's keeping His covenant. So who is keeping His covenant and His steadfast loving kindness to a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his covenant. Those who love him and keep his covenant. Here it says in the New Living Translation, Deuteronomy 7 and 9, New Living Translation, understand, therefore, that the Lord your God is indeed God. He is the faithful God who keeps his covenant for a thousand generations. Lavishes his unfailing love on those who love him and obey his covenant. Lavish! <laughs> so watch this. As you trust God, and God come to your rescue, he's going to lavish you with everything that you're waiting for. The blessing, the miracle, the healing, the increase. He's going to make sure he lavish it. Watch it. Lavish all over you. Everybody's going to look at you and know that God has done it. Understand that God promised to keep you. God promised to sustain you. God promised to be with you even until the end, until he performed what he has to perform. And that's what Jacob held on to. Jacob held on to the promises of God. In the text we read in Deuteronomy, in Genesis 28, the Bible says in Genesis 28, 10 to 22, and Jacob went out from Rashida, went towards Ever, and he, he lighted up a certain place, lighted up a certain place, and he tarried. He tarried. That word tarried is luna, is luna, which means to stay all night, or pass the night, or by, or to latch there, or to remain. So he tarried all night, tarried luna, he, would, he, he, he abided all night, he remained there all night, he latched there all night, because the sun was set, and he took a stone of that place and put them for his pillow. Now Jacob had a pillow, and, and, and he, 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 the pillow was, was a stone, and he took that stone, and he began to sleep. Now, you know, some of us, you can't sleep with no stone on our head. Our heads start hurting. But God was doing something miraculous. Because remember, the rock is Jesus Christ. So he put his head up on the rock. He put his head up on the rock. He took the stone, put it under, on his head, put his head on it. He put his head on the rock, the rock which is Jesus. And then he began to sleep. And while Jacob was sleeping, here the Lord began to speak to Jacob in a dream. He began to give him a prophetic dream. I say to some of you in the season and time that God will allow you to walk in a prophetic realm. That God will call some of you, watch now, to move in realms that you never moved in before. I declare and decree that some of you will have prophetic dreams. I declare that some of you will walk into new realm with God that will blow even your loved one's mind, will blow even your friend's mind. God is going to shift you into realm. He's going to catapult you in the new dimension that's going to blow the minds of those around you. I decree in this time and season that you will encounter some of the greatest prophetic move of God upon your life. And Jacob dreamed, he put the rock on his head. Watch now, verses uh, 13. And behold, the Lord stood above and said, I am here, the God of Abraham, the Father, and the God of Jacob. And the land where thou lie to thee will I give thee and to thy seed. Here God is now pronouncing a different blessing upon Jacob. The same blessing he gave the after Abraham. And then he says, And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and shall spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee, in all thy seed, shall all earth be blessed. Watch now. And behold, Jacob am with you. Mm -hmm. Verses 15. God is with you. Jacob, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you, Jacob. I will keep you. Come on, come on, somebody. God is keeping you. Come on. He's going gonna, he's gonna to bodyguard you. He's going to sustain you. I will keep thee in all thy places where thou go. I will bring thee, uh -huh. I will bring thee again into the land. For I will not leave thee until I've done what I've spoken. Until I've done, that word done is asa, accomplish, make, do. 
said, I thank you. I thank you for your people. Lord, all that you promise them, that you will make sure it come to manifestation. You will make sure it come to reality. You will make sure that it hits your people's home. And tonight I pray, God, that every promise you make for your people, that you, my Savior, will bring it to pass in this now. You will bring it to pass in this season. You will bring it to pass in this season. I decree and I declare, Lord, the manifestation of your promises in your people's life. I thank you. And I say this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to pick up the phone, I want you to call us tonight and we want to pray and believe God with you what God has promised you it got to come to pass in this time and in this season, we love you God bless you, see you next week, bye bye